Hi, and welcome back to Stories of the Saints. On February 21st, we celebrate the feast day of the life of St. Peter Damien. St. Peter Damien is one of those stern figures who seems specially raised up like St. John the Baptist. To recall men in a lax age from the error of their ways and to bring them back into the narrow path of virtue. He was born at Ravenna, and having lost his parents when he was very young, he was left in charge of a brother in whose house he was treated more like a slave than a kingsman. As soon as he was old enough, he was sent to Ten Swine. Another brother, who was archpriest of Ravenna, took pity on the neglected lad and undertook to have him educated. Having found a father in this brother, Peter appears to have adopted from him the surname of Damien. Damien sent the boy to school, first at Finza and then at Parma. He provided an apt pupil and became in time a master and a professor of great ability. He had early begun to ensure himself to fasting, watching and prayer, and wore a hair shirt under his clothes to arm himself against allurements of pleasure and the wild of the devil. Not only did he give away much in alms, but he was seldom without some poor persons at his table and took pleasure in serving them with his own hands. After a time, Peter resolved to leave the worldly entirely and embrace a monastic life away from his own country. While his mind was full of these thoughts, too religious of St. Benedict along to Font Alvina of the reform of St. Ramundo happened to recall at the house where he lived and he was able to learn much from them about the rule and mode of life. This decided him and to join the hermitage, which was then in the greatest repute. The hermits who dwelled in pairs in separate cells occupied themselves chiefly in prayer and readily and lived a life of great austerity. Peter's excessive watching brought on a severe insomnia, which was cured with difficulty, but which taught him to use more discretion. Acting upon this experience, he now devoted considerable time to sacred studies and become as well versed in Holy Scripture as he formerly had been in profane literature. By the anonymous consent of the hermits, he was ordered to take upon himself the government of the community in the event of the superior's death. Peter's extreme reluctance obliged the abbot to make it a matter of obedience. Accordingly, after the abbot's death, about the year 1043, Peter assumed the direction of that the Holy Family, which he governed with great wisdom and piety. He also founded five other hermitages, in which he placed prior under his own general direction. His chief care was to foster in his disciples the spirit of solitude, charity, and humility. Many of them, because great lights of the church, included St. Dominic Loricutus and St. John of Lodi, his successor in the priory of the Holy Cross, who wrote St. Peter's life and at the end of his days became Bishop of Gubbio. For years, Peter Damien was much employed in the service of the church by successive popes, and in 1057, Stephen IV prevailed upon him to quiet his desert and made him Cardinal Bishop of Ostia. Peter constantly solicited Nicholas II to grant him to leave to resign his bishop and return to solitude, but the Pope had always refused. His successor, Alexander II, out of affection for the holy man, was prevailed upon with difficulty to consent, but reserved the power to employ him in church matters of importance, as he might hereafter have need of his help. The saint from that time considered himself dispensed not only from his responsibilities of governing his see, but from the supervision of the various religions, settlements he had controlled, and reduced himself to the condition of a simple monk. In this retirement, he edified the church by his humility, penance, and compunction, and labored in his writings to enforce the observance of morality and discipline. His style is vehement, and his strictness appears in all his works, especially when he treats the duties of the clergy and of the monks. He severely rebuked the Bishop of Florence for playing a game of chess. 
that prelates acknowledgement his amusements to be unworthy and received the holy man's reproof meekly submitted to do penance by reciting the Psalter three times and by washing the feet of twelve poor men and giving them each pieces of money. Peter wrote a treatise to the bishop of Bissagon in which he inveighed against the customs by which the canons of that church sang the divine office seated in choir. Though he allowed all to sit for the lessons, he recommended the use of the disciplines as a substitute for long petition fasts. He wrote most severely on the obligation of monks and protested against their wandering abroad, seeing that the spirit of the retirement is an essential condition of their state. He complained bitterly of certain invasions where by many palliated real infatuations of their vow of poverty. He justly observed we can never restore primitive discipline when once it is decayed, and if we by negligence suffer any diminution in what remains established, future ages will never be able to repair the breaches. Let us not draw upon ourselves so foul a reproach, but let us faithfully transmit to posterity the example of virtue which we have received from our forefathers. St. Peter Damien fought simony with great vigor and equally vigorously upheld clergy celibacy, and as he supports a severe ecclesian cemeterial life for monks, so he was an encourager of common life for the secular clergy. He was a man of great vehemence, and in all he said and did, it had been said of him what his genius was to exhort and impel the heroic to pray strike achievements and to record edify examples and extraordinary forces burns in all that he wrote. In spite of his severity, St. Peter Damien could treat penitence with mildness and indulgence where charity and prudence required it. Henry IV, the young king of Germany, had married Bertha, daughter of Oda, Mark of the March of Italy, but two years later he, he sought a divorce under the pretense that the marriage had never been consummated. By promises and threats, he won over the Archbishop of Mais, who summoned a council for the purpose of sanctioning the annulment of the marriage, but Pope Alexander II forbade him to consent to such an injustice and chose Peter Damien as his legate to preside over the synod. The aged legate met the king and bishops at Frankfurt, laid before them the order and instructions of the Holy See, and entreatment the king to pay due regard to the law of God, the canons of the church, and his own reputation, and also to reflect seriously on the public scandal which so pernicious an example would give. The noble likewise entreated the monarch not to stain his honor by conducting so unworthy. Henry, unable to resist this strong opposition, dropped his project of a divorce, but remained the same at heart, only hating the queen more bitterly than ever. Peter ha hastened back to his desert of font Avalon. Whatever austerity he prescribed for others, he practiced himself, remitting none of them even in his old age. He used to make wooden spoons and other little useful things so that his hands might not be idle during the time he was not at work or at prayer. When Henry, Archbishop of Ravenna, had been excommunicated for his grievous enormities, Peter was again sent to Alexander II as legent to settle the troubles. Upon his arrival at Ravenna, he found that the prelates had just died, but he brought the accomplices of his crimes to a sense of their guilt and imposed on them suitable penances. This was Damien's last undertaking for the church. As he was returning towards Rome, he was arrested by an acute attack of fever in, in a monastery outside of Faronza and died on the eighth day of his illness. While the monks were reciting Martins around him on February 22nd on 1072 AD, St. Peter, one of the chief forerunners of the Hillbrain reform in the church, his preaching was most eloquent and his writings voluminous, and he was declared a doctor of the church in 1828. His feast day is February 21st.
If you like this video about St. Peter Damien, please press the like button. And if you'd like to learn more about the saints, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to become a premium member and watch cinematic movies about the saints, all you have to do is go to thechristianchannel.com and support us by subscribing to our yearly streaming service on your smart TV. Thank you for watching, and God bless.